Hello, this is Professor Doyle Young. How are you today? I'm a pleasure for me to be with you. I'm here to talk about Chapter 4 in uh, our text. And uh, there is no question that, um, that there is great, great, the higher you go up in these organizations, uh, great pressure. It's an all-consuming job as, as you move up and can take up a significant amount of time on the leader's uh, uh, available time. Uh, in terms of their accountability for performance and results. Uh, according to one research report, the, uh, the first, the highest turnover job in corporate America uh, is in the, the chief marketing officers. 44% of those will turn over in, within three years. The second highest was chief executive officers at 36%. So um, it's very important uh, for us to recognize that there is a great amount of change going on now in the world at all levels uh, are at the top. But having said that, we really start bringing in the whole question of managerial competence and incompetence. Um, there are some uh, studies that show that uh, despite the pervasiveness of the importance of leadership, of course, that the base rate of managerial incompetence may be somewhere between 50 and 75 percent according to the text. Um, so there's this incompetence again means that the that the leader is really not performing. Um, they're, they're there to get paid for results, and they, get, and they do that by building uh, performance within the organization. One of those uh, uh, measures of performance is in building teams. So <clears throat> there are uh, you know, really important parts or dimensions of this managerial, how we build managerial or leadership competence, and um, the important part of that is to make sure that these people uh, have accountability for performance throughout the organizations. The biggest source of worry for organizations anywhere is the lack of, frankly, uh, high quality leadership talent. And there are policies in, in organizations that may say that we're not going to develop that uh, 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 competence in-house, that we are going to buy it. And I think that's probably uh, one of my experiences has been most of the prevailing, uh, the most prevailing activity or lack of it in organizations is this notion of developing talent from within. Uh, and sometimes organizations frankly cannot do that. They don't, they're small enough or don't have the resources, financial and otherwise, to do that. Their situation is changing such they really need to go out and, and recruit uh, leaders from the outside that can bring that expertise can uh, effectively parachute into that job and take over and, uh, and do that. When, when they come into the situation, it's important for leaders uh, to have and understand that there are three critical ingredients that organizations look for in persons in a positions of authority. They include the ability to do problem solving and sound decision making, um, <clears throat> really have functional know-how, they really understand how the organization works, the culture, um, that um, uh, the personalities involved um, get, get, get a real sense of what are the issues and concerns in there very quickly, uh, can relate to people at all levels. They don't need to be the technical expert necessarily. The last thing is, is the ability to get things done through and with other people. Um, the book goes into also some detail about the factors that contribute to managerial incompetence. Um, and uh, there, are, there are four there that I'll just mention very briefly. One of those are the demographics. Uh, uh, the demographics today uh, within high change organizations, the demographics for customers, uh, the employee base by age, sex, and so forth, uh, are um, shifting very, very quickly. So um, it's an important factor for uh, leaders to understand is how the demographics impact their business, you know, uh, the kinds of customers, again, they come into, uh, how they can break out those customers into segments and so forth. The second one is lack of employee loyalty. Uh, we're sort of in a, in, a, in a different state than we were just 20 or 30 years ago in organizations when people know, that, again, that they cannot, uh, they cannot tie their future to the loyalty of an employer. You know, they're essentially people are today are recognizing they're tying their future to their skills. Um, so their skills become, uh, frankly, their badge uh, because they can go market those skills just about anywhere else. 
The third area or factor that contribute to, to incompetence is a, a lack of good systems to identify and develop leadership talent. And that one we've sort of emphasized in earlier lectures and some parts of the, you know, this uh, earlier particular lecture, which is the importance of, of leadership talent, uh, retaining, uh, uh, attracting, uh, and developing good leaders. And that implies that the organization needs to make an investment. And here's a key best practice that I'll, you know, that we're going to talk about a little bit more in another section on learning. Uh, but organizations undergoing rapid growth and change where they've got highly uncertain business external environments impacting that organization are spending in excess of 4% of payroll and 4% of people's time in a learning event. <coughs> so, for example, uh, there's roughly in the United States 2,020 hours a year available per individual if you factor out vacations and time off. If you say we're going to spend roughly 4%, the organization is going to co commit to 4% of the person's time in a learning event or process. If you take 4% of 2,000, that's roughly 80 hours during the year, and that 80 hours can be involved with a range of things, including uh, training workshops, tuition reimbursement, uh, coaching, counseling, mentoring, uh, self-paced learning, and so forth. So, you know, this whole area of, of having a system uh, uh, the organization uh, making commitment to help and grow people is, is hugely critical. Uh, lastly, uh, one of the shortfall areas or factors uh, that contribute to shortfall in managerial incompetence is technology. Um, and the, the technology in this case must be embedded within the organization that allows that individual leader to communicate uh, effectively and quickly. For example, if a manager doesn't have email, or uh, cell phone, or uh, have uh, communication technologies for meeting management. These can really hurt, speed up the decision-making process for leaders. So, you know, it's very important, uh, and the research is quite clear, that good talent management systems can have a profound impact on organizational effectiveness and the selection of management leaders at all level. Um, <clears throat> The next area of the book talked uh, uh, a little bit about assessing leader, leadership potential. And uh, there are um, really quite outstanding uh, tools that are available to organizations today to assess uh, uh, leadership potential. Uh, we have a word for those that's called psychometric. Uh, P-S-Y-C-H-O-M-E-T-R-I-C. That's a word that uh, uh, refers to a whole system, if you will, uh, of, uh, of using uh, 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 assessment technologies uh, to, uh, uh, to assess individuals and groups. So they're, they're, the, the work that's been done in this area is really quite substantial. And the leadership assessment techniques that have been used yield more and more valid and accurate predictions uh, of uh, leadership talent. <clears throat> those uh, examples of those are listed in page uh, table 4.1 uh, of the book. And uh, as you look at that material, uh, keep in mind that uh, you may think that that material or the assessment, uh, like surveys, instruments, and so forth, are paper-based. Uh, uh, there is a significant growing use of electronic uh, assessment tools that are proctored. By proctored, that means that they are um, in secure environments. So you're distributing, so for example, an assessment on, to an individual on their leadership capacity or potential. Uh, you, can, uh, you can distribute that in a secure uh, internet way, uh, you know, where, where, where it's encrypted and so forth, and then the actual testing of the t with the individual is in an environment where they know that it's Mary or Harry or John that are showing up to take that test. So there's, uh, you know, it's not a friend of theirs showing up. So there's other means to secure that the person is the right person. <clears throat> now, uh, as we get into this topic, as you see in this chapter, there is a there's a there's a discussion around. Uh, the whole question of competency, and, and we've talked about this before, and I've given you a definition of competency, which is a knowledge, skills, and ability to do a job. 
it's really very important uh, that the organization have a best practice in regards to that particular uh, capability, which is to define the competencies they want in that job before they go out and recruit the person. Uh, this is a key task of management. It's, a, a, it's, it's an important, critical task of management is to be very explicit, very detailed regarding what those knowledge, skills, and abilities look like. If an organization does not do that, they've raised the probability of them hiring people inappropriately for those jobs. Um, there's an old saying that life has a habit of giving you what you settle for. And, and organizations are really quite good these days on the whole that I run into that are, uh, that are being very deliberate and discreet about uh, uh, <clears throat> being detailed about clearly defining the skills and attributes required for the right candidate. Um, <clears throat> so you see in figure 4.2 that they talk a little bit about some of those leadership models or actually some of the competencies, uh, and I don't want to go through all of those, but that goes into some detail. It's, 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 uh, that's a nice list. Um, leading people, leading business, building relationships, you know, and the adaptive or create part of this thing. Uh, figure 4.3 will give you a little more information on sort of uh, the recruiting, screening, and selecting and hiring process and leading to a decision, and uh, <clears throat> that's a, a pretty good summary. Um, the, the chapter will go into some detail on the use, uh, again, of technology, uh, not just paper and pencil measures of leadership potential, but using the Internet. Uh, it does not speak necessarily to, uh, I think, the emerging uh, area of use of e-assessment, electronic assessment online, though it references its Internet. Uh, there are some just incredible tools that are available in America. Uh, I used to work as an officer for a very large international company in which that's pretty much all we did. <clears throat> so, and let me come down to the end here. Uh, just keep in mind that um, uh, having a clearly defined competency model uh, and uh, following that up with a structured process to attract and retain people, for example, interview questions, uh, is, uh, will prove very uh, productive in the selection and judging of successful and unsuccessful candidates into those roles. And uh, more and more organizations are uh, being very clear about uh, their, their competencies that they want, uh, how they're going to measure those. You know, for example, in the interview process, the, you know, the, the ratings by the interviewees, uh, and even sometimes doing a 180 or 360 and having that person interview uh, around those people who would be surrounding the job. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this section of the book. It's a really good chapter to understand how organizations go about selecting and attracting, uh, retaining, and developing leaders. Thank you.